Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is minimum falling path sum. So in this question, we're given a n into n array of integers called matrix and we have to return the minimum sum of a falling path through the matrix. So by definition, a falling path starts at any element in the first row and chooses the element in the next row that is either directly down or diagonally left or right. For example, if we are at the position row comma column, the next element will be either row plus one, column minus one. If we are at this element, row plus one, column minus one is the element diagonally left. So row plus one is the next row and column minus one is this element. Row plus one column is the element directly below it and row plus one column plus one is the element diagonally to the right of this element. So you can move in any of these three directions. And obviously for this and this, you can either go down or go left. If you go right, you'll go out of bounds as there is no element. And from here, you can go directly down or diagonally right. You can't go diagonally left because it will go out of bounds. Now let's take a look at this example and see how we can solve this question. Now this is the input given to us. Now we have to find the minimum falling path sum. So we know we have to use dynamic programming because we are getting the keywords of finding the minimum path and we have to start from any of the rows. So let me take the index position 0, 1. 0, 1, 2. So we have the index position. It's saying you can start from here or you can start from here or you can start from here and from every element you can go one step to the or you can go diagonally left or diagonally right and here in this case there is no element to diagonally left so you can cover that by placing bound check and literally you have to compute the final path by using the elements present inside this array getting the final path and storing the minimum falling path sum for the final row inside this array. So let me create a DP array of the same length so that we can apply this concept for every element and see how we can form the output. So I've taken the same example here. I've created the DP array which will store our output. Since we have to start from the zero row elements, the zero row in the DP array is also going to be the same as the input. So let us fill those values 2, 1 and 3. So every element inside the DP array is going to represent the minimum falling path until that position. So 0, 0, the minimum falling path is 2. 0, 1, minimum falling path is 1. And 0, 2, minimum falling path is 3. And now we start with this element. So you can come to this element from the top or from the top right. There is no element to the top left. So you can ignore this. So what is going to be the minimum path until that element? So it's going to be the current element's value that is 6 plus minimum among these two values 2 comma 1 minimum among those two is 1 so we take 1 and we get the value of 7 so this is 6 plus 1 7 let's do the same for this element how are you coming to that you will come from top you will come from top right or you will come from top left in the dp array you will find 5 plus 5 because to come to that part we have to add that value to so 5 plus minimum among 2 1 and 3 minimum among those two is 1 so add 1 to that then you get 6 Let's pick for this element. You can come to that from top or top left. There's nothing top right, so ignore this. 4 plus, which is that value. And minimum among 1 and 3 is 1. So add 1 to it and you get 5. Now we have to do the same for this value. So take that value, which is 7. And now you can come to this value by taking the minimum among these two values, right? So you can come to this value from here or here. There's nothing here, so you can ignore this. Minimum among 7 and 6 is 6, so take 6. So you get 13 here. Now let's take this value. So it is 8. You can come to that from top, from top right, from top left. Minimum among all those is 5, so this is 13 again. Now let's take this element, the value is 9. You can come to that from top, from top left. You can't come from top right because there's no element. So 9 plus minimum among 6 and 5 is 5. So 9 plus 5 is 14. And now we fill the DP array. And now you find the minimum falling path by reaching the last column, right? And you have the path's value in the last column. So you have to find the minimum among these three values. So min of 13, 13, 14 will give you the answer, which is 13. So 13 is the output. So if you want to find the path, you get through this 13 from this and you get through that from this. So this is one path, which is represented here. And this is the second path. So you can come from here. And from here, you can come to here. So this is another path. That value is also 13. So first you have to fill the DP array. And the DP array, you have to take the same elements as the 0th row. As 0th row, both the elements will be same. And you have to fill the rest of the rows using the previous values. For example, this value you have to take 
minimum among those top three values. For example, here you can't take this element top left. You can only take top and top right element. This you can eliminate by placing a check for the left bound. And for here, you can eliminate the top right element by placing a check on the right bound. This I'll show you during coding. And rest of the same steps are same. And then after having the array, you have to find the minimum in the last row, which is 13 here. Now let's implement the same steps in a Java program. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name. And this is the input matrix given to us. And the return type is an integer because we have to return the minimum sub of a falling path in the matrix. So let's start off by finding out the number of rows and columns, that is the dimensions of the matrix. So rows is matrix dot length and columns is, let's access the zeroth row and find out the number of columns in that. So int calls equal to matrix of zero dot length. Now we have the rows and columns. Now as discussed, we have to create a 2D DP array of the same length as the matrix. So let's create that. Now we have our empty DP array initialized and declared here. Now we have to fill the zeroth row, that is the first row of the DP array with the same elements as the input matrix given to us. So let us use a for loop to iterate through the columns of that row. So I'm using a for loop, it will iterate from zeroth column till the end last column, which we found out here. And now DP of zeroth row and column will be same as the matrix of zeroth row and column element. We already filled the zeroth row inside the DP array. Now let us start an iteration from row 1 until the last row so that we can fill the rest of the DP array. And using the inner loop we will iterate through the columns and columns we will be starting from the zero until the end. Now we have to fill the element pointing at row and column so DP of row column. So we will start filling the DP array from this element. So first we have to add the value present at that element. So we take that element from matrix of row column and then we add the topmost three elements and minimum of the three elements that is top left, top and top right. So DP of row minus one and column minus one and DP of row minus one and column will give you the top element and DP of row minus one and column plus one will give you the top right element. But mat.min in Java takes only two parameters. You can compare only two elements and get the minimum of that. So we have to find the minimum of these two elements and compare it with this element. So let's add mat.min for these two elements also. So mat.min of these two elements. So mat.min of first two elements will get the minimum among those two and it will be compared with this element. And now we have to do the bound check, right? If it is going out of bounds. So we have to check if this is out of bounds. We have to check if it is this is out of bounds. We have to check if this is out of bounds. So let me create three variables. I'll call this top left. I'll call this top and I'll call this top right. So let me create those three variables and those three variables will be assigned with integer.max value because while comparison to find the min value, we'll assign them with the maximum possible value. So assign those three values. Now I can assign this value to top left only when column minus one is greater than zero, right? So column minus one means we have to check with the left bound. If it is greater than zero only, it means it is in the zeroth column. So from right to left, we have to check the bound for this. So if column minus one is greater than or equal to zero, only then I will assign top left with this value. And row minus one should be greater than zero, right? We are checking the bounds for these two parameters. First, I'm checking if row minus one is greater than or equal to zero. And if column minus one is greater than or equal to zero, only then I'm assigning top left with that element. So it means it is inside the matrix. So I'm assigning that element to top left. So let's replace this with top left. Now let's do the same for top right element. So top right is equal to this value. Only if, only if row minus one is greater than or equal to zero and column plus one is less than the total columns. So column plus one, we have to check with the right bound and right bound we will get with the total number of columns. So if this is within this range, only then we have to assign top right element with that and we can replace this with top right. 
and, and now let's check for the top element so top can be only assigned with this value only if row minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 and column does not have any plus 1 or minus 1 so there is no need to check if this is out of bounds it will always be within the range and now we can replace this with top and now we have to check the minimum of these three values so first I'm checking the minimum of these two values I will get a minimum value and then compare it with the top right value so I have to place the entire thing inside another math.min so this is how you check minimum of three elements inside java you can write a helper function and do it but this is the simplest way and here row minus one is greater than or equal to zero only then it will be inside the range and now if you observe we are starting our iteration from row equal to one and row is between the range one to the number of rows so one minus one is greater than zero so this condition is always going to pass since we are starting from row one row zero is already filled so that is why we are starting from row one to fill the rest of the dp array so this condition will always be true so you can remove the row condition you should only check for column condition so you can remove the row conditions here here also row minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 this is always going to be true and here too row minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 so since there is no condition to be checked for the top element so we can remove this and now we have a dp array field and as i said we will find our answer that is minimum falling path sum inside the last row so we have to find the minimum element in the last row so let me create a variable min sum and assign it with the maximum possible value now let's iterate through the columns inside the last row and now i will compare the minimum current minimum sum with all the elements present inside the last row so mat.min of current min sum and the last row element and last row you can access from total number of rows minus one because of the index position and here column will keep on changing so this value will be constant and we will change the column value now we will get our min sum by checking all the last row elements and finally you can return min sum as the output and now we have to do one more change here top value is integer at max value and since we removed the if condition for the top value you have to assign the top value here and top value will be row minus one and column so dp of row minus one and column so dp of row minus one and column will be the top value and there is no need to check any bounds condition so we are not updating that here we, can, we are directly assigning that here you can also place the condition for row minus one and check it won't affect your answer that is why i remove that condition row minus one is greater than or equal to zero now let's try to run the code you have to remove one brace let's run the code and this is not i this is call let's run the code and the test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n square because we are using two for loops to fill our dp array and the space complexity is also o of n square because we are using a 2d dp array to store our output and then calculating the minimum falling path sum from the last row elements now let's do a dry run for this example and see how the dpr is being filled and how we are retrieving the min sum from the last row so let's start by finding out the number of rows and number of columns so rows is equal to matrix dot length that is three because there are three rows and columns is equal to zero row. and how many columns are there one two three so three columns and now we are creating a dp array of the same length as the input given to us so let me create the dp array so i created the dp array here now let us iterate through the zero row and column will keep on changing from 0 until 3 so 0 throw column is 0 dp of 0 0 is this will be same as the matrix of 0 0 so this element so 2 will be here next column is 1 so pick that element and replicate it here next column is equal to 2 it is pointing at 3 so pick that element and replicate it here we fill the 0 throw of dp array will be same as the input right because we start our path from the 0 throw and now we are iterating from row 1 so row is equal to 1 and column is equal to 0 so we are starting at this element now now for that element i have to first add the matrix of row and column matrix of row and column is 6 i have to check three elements top left top and top right so i have to check top element top left and top right top left nothing is there so this will be skipped because column is 0 0 minus 1 is minus 1 
minus 1 is greater than 0 no so top left won't be assigned so it will be the same as max value so i have to pick 6 plus 2 or 6 plus 1 so i have to pick among min of 2 comma 1 and it's 1 so i have to add 6 to that 6 plus 1 so 6 plus 1 will be picked which will become 7 and this will happen for next column is equal to 1 so it will pick this element and now it will check for the top left top and top right now it will pick the current element current element is 5 so 5 plus min of top left is 2 so min of 2 comma top is 1 and top right is 3 min of 2 1 3 is equal to 1 so we add 5 to that so 5 plus 1 is equal to 6 and now we do the same for this element so it will be 4 plus 1 so it is 5 now we go row is equal to 2 and column will come back to 0 in the next iteration now we are at this element so pick 7 plus now the top element now we are accessing the elements in the dp array so i just showed you here because there was no element here i showed you for the first row using input now we have to fill the dp of 2 we'll use the values inside dp of 1 as the row minus 1 so current element is 7 so take 7 so 7 plus top top left is nothing and top right minimum among that is 6 so this is 13 now this element current element is 8 so add 8 here 8 plus minimum among 7 6 5 minimum among 7 6 5 is 5 so it will take this so 8 plus 5 is 13 again now take 9 9 plus top left and top top right is not there so 9 plus 6 comma 5 minimum is 5 so this is 14 so we finish filling all the rows from 1 to end in the dp array and now we have our answer present inside the last row inside the dp array so i'm creating a variable called min sum which is initially the maximum possible value 2 power 31 minus 1 and now i'm iterating through all the elements inside the last row so row is total number of rows 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 so i pick the last row so this is default which is 2 and this will range from column which is initially 0 until 3 so 0 1 and 2 will be columns values in first iteration i is equal to 0 1 and 2 now it will pick minimum among 13 13 and 14 and minimum among them is 13 we come out of the for loop and return whatever is present inside min sum min sum as 13 so 13 will be returned as the output which is the expected output that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video